Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be looking at now the finally completed DC Comics Multiverse Collect and Connect Clayface. Let's quickly figure out how tall this guy stands. And putting the tape measure up against his torso, the figure is roughly about eight and a half inches high. It's not the proper gauge because his arms aren't flush against his torso. But just for fun, if you guys were wondering how wide the figure is, he's about eight to an eight and a half inch. So he's almost eight and a half inches square, both wide and tall. Yes, this was a bit of a long overdue review. I wanted to have a look at this particular wave before and I just never got around to it. In my defense, as I like to think I have a defense, in my defense, uh, unfortunately, here in Canada, as good as things may be being a Canadian, we have good health care and beautiful land. Unfortunately, the trade-off to that is sometimes our retail stores suck when it comes to selections. I've yet to see this particular wave even hit the stores. A lot of Marvel Legend waves, for example, are several waves back. DC Universe, for example, is even worse than that. Unless it's a movie tie-in, then you may sometimes get figures like the Wonder Woman multiverse line, or the Justice League multiverse line, or the Batman v Superman, but it sprinkles ever so gently, and you have to kind of go to a couple of different stores to see if you can find the entire wave. So ultimately, I just kind of coughed it up, sucked it up, and I went to uh, I went on eBay and picked up the entire wave. That's the story of, that's the glory of love, and love is rocky at times. So that's unfortunately why it took me a little longer to get this review finally done this entire wave, so I apologize for that. But ultimately, one would be safe to assume that watching this channel and my love affair for Clayface, eventually I would get the wave. A little bit slower than some of the others, but hopefully it's always well worth the wait when you guys see reviews on this particular channel. So having a look at Clayface now fully assembled, I am pleasantly impressed with how well he turned out. To be fair though, uh, as good as the figure may be, I find one of his biggest problems is not necessarily the sculpt or the mold of the figure, but rather his paint. His really dark, muddy to tones, which I know sounds funny for me to say that about a character named Clayface, but I think his dark tones is almost the detractor here for this figure. And I'm comparing it right now to the DC Universe um, or DC Superheroes Clayface, which I have to find in storage. I, I know I've got him somewhere. He's uh, one of my favorite figures of all time. Of course I'm going to have him somewhere, but uh, his coloring was a little bit more lighter. I dig this particular color, which um, really makes the, makes the majority of this guy's color scheme. It looks like the figure is basically this color brown, kind of a dark, very boring brown. And then over top of it, They've painted almost a caramel color. But that is the only color that makes up this entire figure. It gets a little on the boring side. And I, I it pains me to say that because I really love every element about this figure except for his paint. I think if they had gone, and I'm only kind of picking out a few colors here, where this color is a little bit more predominant, let's say, let's screenshot this image right here, this section. That color right there, I think if this color was more predominant instead of just lightly brushing that color, but if that color was more predominant over the course of the entire body, it would thereby lighten the figure up and I think also would have really brought it, really just jazzed this figure up in that little oomph of extra color because he is really on the muddy side. It could almost be borderline boring but I don't really want to use the term boring. It's the best word I can come up with at the time of shooting this review, but boring is really, please understand, boring is not the word I want to be using, but it gets very consistently bland. Some additional also like little uh, bulbous ball areas of clay, or like even this section right here, you can see like there's these little folds and stuff like that. If they had done a couple larger chunks of it, just so it did, just didn't look like overlapping clay, which I know sounds so ridiculous for me to say that. That's essentially what this character is. But like these little areas here, if they had done more of these, just kind of put them all over the place, it would have taken and just broken up very consistent looking folds, and just kind of added a little bit more to it. 
Having a look at his face, his face is wondrous. I love this particular head sculpt. He does have an open and closed mouth, and interestingly enough, he has a secondary row of teeth way back at the back area of his tonsils. Not really sure why he has to have that. I mean, the mouth perfectly works fine, just with the front row and top and bottom row of teeth. But he definitely has a secondary series of teeth in there as well. The mouth is a very nice contrast, the bright red versus the otherwise very dark, muddy colors of the brown. And the yellow also is a nice touch too. Maybe a panel outlining of black around those yellow eyes could have also made them pop a little bit more, but otherwise pretty happy with the head sculpt. And again, you've got this really nice wrinkly. You know, he actually reminds me when I'm looking at him, he looks like the Rancor from Return of the Jedi. Very similar sort of body mold, of course, minus the folds of, of mud, but a very similar sort of build to him. Very much reminds me of like the Rancor. Um, again, the back of the figure pretty much looks like the front. And again, that's that's a very tr like kind of in-between opinion because at one point you could say, well, he, you know, he's clay. What do you expect him to look like? But just a little bit of something could have been could have been helpful because like the front really doesn't look that much different from the back. It's a little extra, little extra things, a little extra color could have just popped this character a little bit more. Again, going back to the more brighter orange here, a little bit more of that I think could have really added some extra coloring to this guy. Having a look at his posability, his head rotates rather odd, oddly, but of course it rotates this way around. His mouth, yum, 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 yum. I like mud sandwiches. Opens and closes. Uh, his arms hinge outwards, so giving me a very nice stance. And really, he does a good job of supporting his own weight. So you could bring his arms outward, and the feet are flat, at, are flat planted in such a way that even though they are smaller, they really uh, balance out the much larger weight of his torso, the top area of the top torso area of his body. Uh, the arms rotate all the way around, as well as a hinge back and forth. He has a rotation all the way around on the hands, a hinge back and forth. I had mentioned this a couple of times during these reviews that I really would have loved also if they had given one or two extra figures that would have had some additional appendages you could have added to his arms. I mean, it seems as if his arms could be detached here and could be detached here and could be detached here. This could obviously stay in place, but you could have gotten so creative with what you could have done here, uh, a giant ax, or something that you would probably have seen more so from the Batman animated series. And that particular clay face definitely had a lot more extra things, like a big giant mace with spikes, big giant clay blade, something, just so it wasn't just so it wasn't just this. And the best way to compare this particular figure is with the Marvel Legends uh, Build-A-Figure Sandman, which unfortunately I don't have, is in storage as well. But if you wanted to go back and have a look at my review of, of that particular wave, Sandman came defaulted, but then he had all these extra things that you could add to him. I kind of wish Clayface got, would have gone the same route as well, that there could have been some options for what you could have done extra to the particular limbs. Let's go back to his articulation. Upper torso hinge, kind of slightly rocking as well. He has a lower waist swivel. And a rather impressive feat of clay. Eh? It's like, I'm here all day. His legs move forward and back and also split out. He has a lower swivel cut around the top area of his, of his knee. Then he has a lower ball joint around just really below the knee area. Uh, and then he has a rocking ankle, and a hinge back and forth. Periodically, I like to use the term phoning in, usually to the negative that a company sometimes feels as if they've just phoned in a figure, giving the bare basic, the bare efforts, the slimmest of efforts to give us a particular figure. Clayface, I do not feel that way at all. I don't feel like they just phoned in the figure especially when you look at the articulation on this particular guy, he really rivals some of the stuff that we were getting, say, for example, from the DC, uh, the Diamond Select, Marvel Select figures, where you get a nice, big, bulky figure, but you also get 
a lot of posability as well. This guy has a lot of posability, and he's also got the, the, the sheer mass to him that one would expect to find with particular with this particular clay face. There's always an unfortunate, though, and let me be the bearer of bad news. The unfortunate end of this particular figure for how good he is is that he comes in a wave of slightly lackluster characters. Some of the figures aren't bad, but they're I don't think really any of them I would have gone out of my way and gotten them individually had I not wanted to pick up Clayface. And that seems to be, I don't know, maybe I'm becoming a bit of a Marvel Legends or DC Collectibles, DC Multiverse snob. But there's certain figures where I just look at them lately and I think I would never have picked up these figures on their own. Some of the notable ones that I did actually enjoy was Two-Face. Even though he's not really the Two-Face that I really know and love, I do like the new updated take on this particular particular Two-Face, and I really like the head sculpt, both the scarred and the non-scarred version. Part of me almost wants to say that this is my favorite figure from the wave, which might even have a few people scratching their heads. Why would you pick Two-Face? Of all the figures released from this wave, why would you pick Two-Face? I like the coloring. I like the head sculpt. Like I said, the scarring on the scarring on the one side, even though he doesn't have the zanier hair on the one side, I do think he's got a good design element to him. He came very close to being beaten out by Batwoman here. Batwoman actually, I might even say ties with Two-Face as my favorite figure from this wave. Can you do a tie on first place? I can do whatever I want. It's my it's my channel. Uh, my third favorite figure from this wave, and there's very few figures left to go through, is probably Martian Manhunter. So I think in an instance such as this, my top two favorite figures, first place would be tied between Two-Face and Batwoman, and my second favorite figure, and thereby the, the bronze, I guess if you will, by third place, would be Martian Manhunter. Um, as for the other figures, Jessica Cruz isn't terrible, but I don't find her overly exciting as well. I love these additional electricities that they added for the particular figure, but I just find the figures just hum, just ho-hum. And I might have maybe even targeted this figure as loathing him as much as I did. I'm really disappointed. I'm not so much hating the figure, but I'm more so disappointed with the DC Rebirth Superman here. Um, I've really, if anything, I mean, if you had asked me right from day one, what was the figure I was really wanting to get from this wave? Obviously, it was Clayface. But the one I really wanted was this guy here. A big Superman fan am I. And yet, ultimately, he was almost my... I think it's because I expected more from Superman. I don't expect as much from uh, Jessica Cruz. But I'm such a Superman fan that this particular head sculpt is deplorable. You may like this head sculpt yourself. I'm not a big fan of it. So there you go, guys. That was the look at the entire DC Universe multiverse figure wave. And uh, this was the, the Clayface Connect and Collect and Connect. I always get those two confused. Collect and Connect, a Clayface. And then here were all the figures that made up this particular wave. Of course, the DC Multiverse figures aside, what we were looking at in this particular review was the Collect and Connect Clayface, which is one of my favorites of the Collect and Connect figures of recent memory. He has a very large mass to him and the necessary articulation to accomplish and pull off some pretty successful poses. Ultimately, I kind of went vanilla here when it comes to final looks, just because I like the towering presence of him. I didn't want to go overly crazy with his pose, but he does have the articulation that if you want to go in there and get a little zanier with this particular figure, you can certainly definitely do that. Um, the really only nitpicks I can make about the particular figure without thinking of any additional accessories would be the same thing I like about the figure. I do love the mold, but I think that maybe just a jazzing up of color could have added a little extra oomph to this particular figure. I get the fact that he is a muddy character. He is Clayface after all, but maybe they could have lightened up some of the color schemes to him. They could have still kept the darker under colors of the plastic, but maybe just jazzed up the lighter colors that they washed over top of it, just to give him some extra oomph. We just didn't seem as muddy as he actually does. Now talking a little bit about the accessories. The accessories on this guy don't exist. He only has a pair of gripping, smashing Batman hands. And unfortunately, I wish he could have come with something a little bit more creative. Something to what Marvel Legends did with the Marvel Legends 
uh, Build-A-Figure Sandman. They got a little creative with giving him a sledgehammer, or really even if you think of like the DC Collectibles Clayface, that Clayface came with a mace and an axe, stuff like that. The figure here does have the necessary detachable arms that you could accomplish that. Mattel just ultimately decided that this was what we needed to release for Clayface. So I can't say that it's a strike on the figure because the figure on its own, not having those accessories, I don't feel like I'm missing out, but there's always more that you can do to a figure to jazz it up and some extra bladed and extra appendages could have gone a long way. That being said, I really love this, app, this, lo love this figure. It's not my favorite Clayface figure, I think that title would still go to the DC Superheroes Clayface, which I'm going to have to go. I'm going to go to my storage. I'm going to go through all my bins, and I'm going to see if I can find that figure again. And if I do, rest assured, I'll do a comparison between the DC Superheroes Clayface and the DC Multiverse Collect and Connect Clayface that we were looking at today. In the meantime, today we were having a look at the Collect and Connect Clayface. This was from the DC Multiverse line. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. Many more videos will be coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.